Hepatorenal syndrome is a life-threatening condition characterized by rapidly progressive kidney failure that is seen in people with advanced liver disease. The prognosis is very bleak and is usually fatal without a transplant. There are two types. Type 1 has a median survival of two weeks and features a rapidly increasing creatinine level. Type 1 happens commonly in relation to spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Type 2 is a slightly more moderate form with a median survival of 10 weeks and a steadier creatinine. Here, patients typically have ascites that is resistant to diuretics. Approximately 18% of cirrhotic patients who have ascites will develop hepatorenal syndrome within one year. So what exactly happens that makes this condition so bad? The hallmark is renal vasoconstriction in the setting of a vasodilation in the splanchnic vessels. Those are the vessels supplying the stomach, intestines, spleen, liver and pancreas. The main branches of the aorta that make it up are the celiac artery as well as the superior and inferior mesenteric arteries. The underfill theory is that as liver disease progresses and portal hypertension follows, possibly also generating ascites, there is a splanchnic vasodilation because of release of vasodilatory mediators like nitric oxide and prostaglandins. This vasodilation leads to more blood being directed into the splanchnic vessels, which ends up draining into the portal circulation, which causes the juxtaglomerular apparatus of the kidney to activate the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, leading to vasoconstriction systemically and in particular in the kidneys. But the splanchnic vasculature is resistant to vasoconstriction due to the production of local vasodilators like nitric oxide, and so remains vasodilated. The cycle continues as the kidneys still perceive the circulating volume to be inadequate and activate the RAAS system, leading to this vicious cycle of the renal vasoconstriction and splanchnic vasodilation, ultimately leading to renal failure. The activation of the renin-angiotestin-aldosterone system is thought to be an important step in the formation of ascites in patients with cirrhosis, to the extent that ascites and hepatorenal syndrome may be considered a spectrum where the splanchnic vasodilation determines the resistance of ascites to diuretics, as is seen in type 2 hepatorenal syndrome, as well as the onset of kidney vasoconstriction that leads to the initial onset of hepatorenal syndrome. It is important to remember that having a cirrhotic patient with an AKI does not mean that the patient has HRS. They may have the AKI for other reasons, and so hepatorenal syndrome is a diagnosis of exclusion. It's important to rule out conditions like acute tubular necrosis or glomerular pathologies. There are predictive factors and triggers that may cause hepatorenal syndrome, including a large paracentesis, a hemorrhage, or an infection that may provide a clue, but there are major criteria which all must be present. These are a low GFR, indicated by a creatinine level above 1.5 mg per deciliter or a creatinine clearance level below 40 ml per minute. Additionally, there is the absence of shock, infection, recent nephrotoxic agent use and fluid loss, as well as the absence of an improvement when treated with 1.5 liters of saline. Also, a proteinuria below 500 mg per day with no kidney disease or obstruction on ultrasound is also considered a major criterion. The minor criteria include oligourea, meaning a daily urine production of less than 500 milliliters, a low sodium concentration in the urine, typically below 10 milli equivalents per liter, a urine osmolality greater than that of the blood, absence of red blood cells in the urine, and a serum sodium concentration below 130 millimoles per liter. The definitive treatment is a transplant. If it's a type 1 hepatorenal syndrome, then due to the connection with spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, patients may be started on third-gen cephalosporins like ceftriaxone. Other medical therapies include using albumin to try to expand the plasma volume, as well as vasopressin analogues like terlipressin, which has been shown to improve the kidney function in patients with hepatorenal syndrome. A combination of mydodrine, an alpha agonist and systemic vasoconstrictor, with octiotride, a somatostatin analogue and inhibitor of splanchnic vasodilation, has been shown by some studies to have a significant improvement in kidney function. The other options 
include procedures such as the transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt, known as TIPS, as well as liver dialysis or renal replacement therapy, but these are considered to be bridge to transplant therapies.